Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about how to use your uh, smartphone as a calculator. If you're interested, you do not have to do this. It is not required for the course, but it's just something I wanted to provide you as an extra um, learning tool if you're interested. All right, so we're going to talk about the first two competencies of college algebra, which are recognizing functions and specifying the domain and the range, and then also being able to graph various functions. We're going to focus on linear and quadratic here at, uh, in this exercise. All right, so we're going to talk about um, our example is y or 2x minus 3y equals 12, which would be a linear equation. I know this is linear because x is to the first, y is to the first. Um, and those always graph to make just a line, straight line. Uh, step one, to use a graphing calculator or a smartphone calculator, you have to first solve the equation for y, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then step two, we're going to be using um, either your graphing calculator or you can download a free version with your cell phone, such as Calculate 84. And that's the one that I've chosen to use. Let me show you what that looks like. Um, all right, on my um, cell phone, I've got... Um, this icon, if you can see that, it's just simply Calculate 84. It was a free version of a graphing calculator. Yeah, let's see if that's better. I had a glare on the screen. Let's see if we can see that better. But um, we're going to go to the Y equals feature, and I have some stuff here, so if you have anything on yours, you want to clear it to start fresh. Uh, but this allows us to use this just like a graphing calculator. I think it looks just like one, so maybe a little bit smaller, but um, handy because you've always got it uh, on your person, I, I would assume. So if you've not used a graphing calculator before, I want to introduce you to some of the main buttons. Along this uh, first row, we can see, um, and I've listed these in your handout that I've, I've sent you or um, in your blackboard and uh, you can read more about it, but the y equals allows you to input an equation, solve for y. That's why we have to solve our equation for y. That's how this is set up. You can do multiple equations, but we mainly focus on just doing one at a time for right now. Um, and then to get your x button to write in the x variable, it's the, um, the third row, second from left, and it looks like this. It has other things on it, but when you hit it, just the x comes up in the um, just the regular feature. And x is our independent variable. We know that's the input variable for our equation. We solve for y, y equals, or later we call it f of x equals, but that's your input. Um, the x would be your input variable, or your independent variable in your equation. And the next feature um, uh, along the uh, main row here is window. Window is like if you were just drawing on graph paper and you drew a 10 by 10 grid. It's how big you make your grid. And you have some control over that. You can go to the window screen. Its default is it starts at negative 10 for the x minimum and it goes to positive 10 for the x max. So that's how far it draws it horizontally. And this x scale means we're counting by ones. And then we can do the Y um, as well. The default is a negative 10 by 10 and counting by ones. We can change all of that. We can make it 20 by 20. Uh, you know, we type in negative 20 and then positive 20 to make it go from negative 20 to positive 20. Um, and we can make it count by twos or by tens. So if you had a, a, a large number you were dealing with and um, some real life scenarios, the numbers are larger, so we would need to adjust the window or it just wouldn't fit in our screen to help us to decipher it. So most of the ones in our book and the ones that we'll use are contrived so that they do fit, but um, not always. So anyway, we've got window, then we've got zoom, and many things in there you can zoom in and zoom out. And one that's handy is Z standard, which means that takes it to the 10 by 10, sort of the default 10 by 10 screen. Um, then we have trace, which allows you when you do have something graphed, I have nothing in there right now, but you can move along the uh, graph, move the cursor, and you can move that with the arrow buttons. But since you're using a smartphone, it's touch screen, you can use your, um, your, your hand. Um, and then we have the graph. The graph is the main thing. That's the main uh, star of the show, right? Graph is where you um, make it show the graph, draw, draw the picture in. Um, and then over top of those, and I have some other details here, over top of those are some other useful functions that we'll use uh, along or you can use if you want. 
stat plot. We don't use that that often, but it changes like solid lines to dotted lines and various things. And these are hard to see. It's hard for me to see even just looking straight at it, but on the screen I know it's even harder. But there's second functions. So if you hit your second blue button and then y equals, that brings up the uh, second function stat plot. You can see various types of graphs you can make, which you might use in statistics more than in your algebra class. Then we have table set up, the, the one that's over window. We can count by um, whole number one, but sometimes we want to count and see the fractional amount. So if I, I've got mine set to count by 0.5. Um, so you can change those around and then table start. What do you want it to start with? Do you want to start with zero? Even if you don't have that uh, programmed in there, you can arrow up and down and see other points. But the default seems to be zero. And then the default here, before I changed it, it was counting by ones. So I'll leave it back at that for now. Um, then uh, let's see, format. I don't use, let's see, format doesn't seem to be coming up on my app, so I'm not sure if there's something up with that, but we don't really need it right now. Um, and then the second of trace, we use that one to uh, help us out a lot. So second of trace is uh, we can find the uh, zeros, which is helpful. That's how we find our x-intercepts. Very helpful feature. And minimum and maximum will help us when we do our parabolas to find where they their lowest or highest point is. Intersect when we do something out of um, chapter 5 later to find where two lines cross. So those are the main ones we'll use in this class. And then let's see, last one, we use this one a lot, is table. It's very handy. It has um, XY values. I don't have any uh, equation plugged in, so it doesn't have my XY table for me right now, but uh, I will do that in here in just a minute. But table, again, it's over, over the graphing feature. All right, so let's get at it. On the next page, we're going to talk about that equation 2x minus 3y equals 12 that I mentioned earlier and practice with that one. Um, like I said earlier, you have to solve it for y to input it in this um, application. So we move the x variable across the line, which will make it negative 2x. So you always throw the x term across the line, so it'll change its sign. And then divide by what's in front of your y variable. Uh, so you can see how that works out. And so our equation we need to input in our y equals feature, so going back to that, is 2 thirds, 2 divided by 3, x minus 4. Okay, so everybody put that in your calculator and then hit graph and it draws that graph for you in a 10 by 10 screen. Um, then I would ask you to think about these other um, activities after you hit graph can you use the trace like the your um, tracing like you can move it since it's a touch screen to different points and try to find where it crosses the x-axis that's what an x-intercept is is this is your x-axis this is your y-axis so intercepting means where the graph crosses your x-axis which looks about right here and there's an xy uh, value given below so you can use that to kind of estimate but it's not perfect it's not going to get perfectly on that dot even with any of the graphing calculators um, sometimes the pixels don't line up just right it's, it's hard to get it exactly where you want it so that's why we need to use like calculate and other um, features but we can kind of get a good estimate we can see it's about at six would you agree and it says 5.9 something, and then the y is almost at zero. To be a true x-intercept, y needs to equal zero. So when y equals zero, that's an x-intercept. Vice versa, if we're trying to find the y-intercept where it crosses this y-axis, you can cursor it over, and it looks like it's about at negative four. It should be at negative four algebraically. I know that to be true, but it's hard to get exactly to fall on that, so you might notice. But pretty close there, when x is 0, y is the, uh, that you've got your y-intercept. So trying to make x be 0 to be neither left nor right, but exactly at 0, when y is 0, or sorry, I mean when x is 0, you've got your y-intercept, so negative 4. Now, we can verify these by looking at um, the, the table of values that I mentioned earlier. So if you hit table, notice it gives us an xy table there. 
to swallow off. You know, a lot of times uh, students will pick like zero for X and one and two, just those basic values. Um, but with some graphs, you need a little more information than that. So um, uh, this gives you lots of table values if you want to use that uh, in that way. So um, notice that when X is zero, Y is negative four. That's our Y intercept, exactly what we needed there. So um, you can verify your Y intercept sometimes. Now sometimes it's at a fractional amount and um, that's not going to be accurate enough because if you just counted by ones and your y-intercepts at say three-fourths, you're not going to catch it with this method. So sometimes you need to fall back on the algebra, but the app is, it's handy. It's, it's also helpful to conceptualize it, I think. But um, if I'm not counted um, by a fractional amount, notice again the tables, the x value zero, one, two, three, four, five, I, I'm counting by ones. So if the answer needed to be in a fractional amount, then I would be out of luck with this. But it's still handy. You can see zero, negative four. That was good. Then, um, what did we think the x-intercept was? The x-intercept happens when y equals zero. So let's see if we can find that. Oh, there it is. When y is zero, x is 6. So there's our x-intercept. And we should only have one x-intercept with a linear equation, just one solution. So there it is. Okay, um, how do we calculate the x-intercept? I, I skipped three, so if we want to use the calculate feature, we do second of trace, and the x-intercept is called the zero. So we hit, you can touch screen or use your arrow, enter. It asks you to go to the left-hand side of anywhere, on the left-hand side of where you think the x-intercept is, and you can see this little cursor here. It says left bound, so I hit enter. Then move the cursor to the right-hand side of that zero, hit enter, and then it gives you the zero is exactly at six, like we suspected it was, but then it's more accurate there. You can get your um, solutions to equations basically this way by using the calculate feature here. Okay, um, now let's think about some other points. You could verify some other points, for example, going back to this table of values. Let's pick, um, it says, uh, can you see this nine and two should be a solution to uh, this equation, one of the solutions. So if you put in nine for X and two for Y back into your equation, uh, again, that's, where is that? Right here. 2 times x is 9 minus 3 times y is 2, does that equal 12? We can verify these points algebraically, and we could find our own points this way as well. 2 times 9 is 18 minus 3 times 2, that's 6. 18 minus 6, notice it works. And all these points, that's what they represent. They're solutions to this equation. Now, like I said, we're missing some of the solutions. I mean, you know, we're missing a lot of the solutions if you think about it, because there's fractional amounts. So I'm going to tell my, um, I'm going to go back to my table setup and change this to 0.5. I'm going to have it count by halves now. And um, let's now go to the graph, or I mean the table. I want to show you the table. Now notice it tells me at x is the fractional amount. It's like, oh, sorry about that. Um, Notice that at a half, it gives me a y value, and at one, it gives me a y value, and at one and a half, so it'll count by one and a half, so I get more values. I could go back to the table setup and count by even point one. And uh, let's go back up here, point one, and then graph, or I mean to do table. So now it's counting even by smaller increments and I could do by point zero 0.01 and on and on, which tells me I can plug in anything for X and I'm gonna get an answer for Y. Any fractional amount, large integer amount, any number I plug in for X, I get an answer for Y for that. But I'm not seeing them all in my table unless I change my window um, and the table setup to, to show that. But typically we count by ones. We like the integer numbers. They're easier to deal with. But I just wanted you to see there are, there's more to the story behind the scene. If we can plug in other things, fractions and decimals are there. Okay, so, so we can talk about uh, verifying table values. We can also verify more points by taking them off the table. We can change our window. Uh, so in window, we can change this to count 
by maybe negative 20 to 20 like I mentioned and count by twos if you want you can do anything and then we can change it back to standard um, if we like the 10 by 10 if it works for us all right so that's kind of just an opening review I'll um, add more in the next video hope that helps